In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use NCLOF to create models. So the first thing that we need is a polygon primitive to apply our NCLOF to. And I'm creating a tablecloth, so the smartest thing for me to do would be to start with a flat plane. I want my tablecloth to rest on the table, so I'm going to start it up here at the start of my simulation and it will fall down onto the table. I don't need to go too high. I'm going to scale it so that it's roughly the right size. And then what we need to make sure for an anchor simulation is that the object that's going to deform has enough subdivisions. This currently does not. You can add subdivisions by going up to mesh smooth. But I'm not going to do it that way because you can see that because I stretched mine longer in one axis that I have rectangles. So I'm just going to undo that. I'm instead going to use the creation parameters of my polyplane, which if you've only just created it, your object, well, you will be able to see them here. But otherwise, you can find them in the channel box and I can go in and adjust the values. I might go a little little bit higher the higher the subdivisions you have the slower your simulation is going to be but the more definition you're going to get you don't want to go too heavy but you need some levels of subdivision once you're happy with the placement subdivisions and scale you're going to freeze the transforms of your object i'm just going to name this tablecloth sim and now i'm going to actually turn it into an ncof object so i would go to the fx drop down menu and cloth and create and cloth a couple of things happened when i applied the end cloth to my geometry first of all it's disappeared if yours has too don't worry all that's happened is when i applied it my time slider wasn't on zero so if i look it's just fallen into the abyss if i click this button it will go back to frame zero and it will be sat where we positioned it the nucleus contains all of the parameters for the world. So you have gravity and things like wind speed and direction. Gravity is set to 9.8 and this is the real world value for gravity. So if you are trying to simulate like the real world, I would leave this value as it is. You can easily play around with things like air density and wind speed. These are fairly self-explanatory what they do. So the one thing that I do want to point out is NCLOF will always default to using one unit equals one meter to simulate. So if you've modeled in meters, you don't need to worry, you just simulate and it will have real world values. If you've modeled in centimeters, then what you need to do is come to this space scale and change it to 0 0.01. Now you might be wondering, Holly, I don't know if I've modeled in meters or centimeters. So the quickest way would be to create a cube. When Maya creates a cube, it always creates it as one unit in every axis. So this is a one meter cube. And if I put this in relation to my object, we can see we can see that I've modeled in meters. My picnic bench is a bit less than a meter. If you create your cube and your object is absolutely massive in comparison, then you've modeled in centimeters. And so you would want to go and change the space scale value to 0.01. The end cloth contains all the parameters for the cloth itself. There's lots of values here. I'm not going to cover them all in this tutorial, but what we are going to look at is applying a preset. There are some presets here of lots of different materials. For this example, I'm going to use a t-shirt and hit replace. Mine's automatically updated the parameters for me. Now I need to tell Maya what my cloth is going to interact with. So you want to select your object, multiple objects and groups also worked and go to the FX drop down menu and cloth and choose create passive collider. What happens is we now get these N rigid nodes. You will get one per object. So that's the reason why I combined. I didn't want to have one for every single object of my bench because if I wanted to update it, it would take me far too long. And I know that this bench isn't going to animate. So I was okay to combine it all. If you have objects that move independently of each other, you have objects that are going to animate, then you wouldn't combine them and you would just have to deal with having multiple end rigids. This contains the parameters for the collision object. One last thing before we hit 
playing on the simulation is we just want to check our playback speed. If you right click and go to playback speed, you want to choose play every frame max real time. You'll notice that I will start to cache it in the background and that is shown as this red bar. I don't need to hit play to simulate it, but if I hit play with the red bar there, it's going to play back in real time my simulation. You can see my cloth um, is starting to fall off my table and now it's gone. With the red bar there, I can actually scrub through um, as well so I can check areas of it. Now I don't really want my cloth to have fallen off so how can we fix that? Well if you have the same problem as me then a couple of ways we can do that. I could just add a little bit of stickiness to my table um, so that my cloth has something to hold on to. My top tip is if you're going to change a parameter on anything, you just try one value at a time to see what happens. And so we've added some stickiness. Let's let Maya cache that and then we can play it and see what happens. It did help. My cloth isn't properly falling off now. It's still a bit lopsided. I'm just going to turn up the stickiness even more so go up to 0.2 and I'm going to let Maya cache that and then we can have another look. So that's much better, it's not falling off now, we're getting some nice creasing, we're getting some nice um, interaction with the bench. The only thing that I can want to point out is we get this gap here um, and again this is to do with our collision object, everything has a collision thickness and so what I want to do is turn this down and let my Akasha again. Okay, that has improved it. There's still a bit of a gap there, but overall it's reduced and when I am happy with this, I'm going to create thickness to my cloth anyway. So that will close up that gap. So now the process of turning this into being a model is I would just take my object on the frame that I like, maybe something like this frame, and I would press Control D to duplicate. I'm just going to rename this now Geo. I can hide everything that I was using for my simulation. And now I have a tablecloth that's been modeled. I could press 3 on this and we get a nice smoothed version. I can select it in object mode and choose to extrude it and use the thickness value. If I extrude negatively it will close up that gap. If I extrude in the negative it will close up the gap that we had and so then it's I just need to fix the normals by going to mesh display reverse couple of things I can see is that this part of the table is poking through which is not a good look. This is down to the fact that this is a sharp corner and I don't have enough subdivisions. So I could go back and add some more subdivisions but what I can also do is come in here and use soft select by pressing B and then hold B and left mouse button to change the area it's affecting and just pull that geo so we don't see that anymore. And now I have a cloth that I have very quickly created. It would have taken me far too long to model this. Um, and now I have a cloth that I can use in a render.